Tonight's Cushy Gavin Award Management Awardee is Glenn W. Kingsbury, Executive Director of Mika Boston. That is the Electrical Contractors Association. Glenn has been involved with NECA since 1979 and has been executive director since 1997. In this role, he advocates for electrical and telecom union contractors by promoting highest construction standards in the electrical industry. His job and the talents he brings to it are multifaceted. Throughout his 37-year career, an increasingly hostile environment has driven the deterioration of the unionism in the construction industry, a trend that Nika has defied over its 100-year history. Glenn has resolutely navigated the challenges of bolstering productivity, building market share, minimizing costs, and maintaining workers' quality, health care, and in retirement. Throughout, he has worked closely with four IBEW locals representing 6,000 workers throughout New England. Alongside these unions, Glenn has worked diligently to develop world-class training programs at IBEW 103 and NICA's joint training facility in Dorchester. As Glenn states, one thing union building trades can do is we can train. Investing in training is something we've always uh, put a lot of stock in. 90% of apprentices in this region are union apprentices. Nika also trains journeymen, foremen, and over a thousand field supervisors. Again and again, <coughs> pardon me. Again and again, I've heard. <coughs> again and again. I've heard IBEW leaders and his, uh, and his contractors speak of Glenn with deep appreciation, respect, and warm affection. The Labor Guild is proud to honor Glenn Kingsbury with the 2016 Cushing Gavin Management Award for Excellence in Labor Management Relations, exemplifying integrity, competence, and service to his member contractors, the electrical and construction industries, his union partners, and the greater Boston and New England communities that he represents with tremendous skill, vision, and innovative dedication. Glenn, could you step up and accept your award? Good luck, she says. Gonna need it. Wow. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank our co-chairs and Allison and the Labor Guild staff for all the work they did putting this great event together. There's a ton of work that goes into something of this scale, and they all deserve a lot of credit. I'd also like to congratulate the fellow honorees this evening. They were uh, great people that devoted their careers to improving labor management relations in the Commonwealth, and, and I'm proud to join them on the stage tonight. Before I get started in all the, uh, on the, all the thank yous, I need to recognize my uh, my wife, Judy, is here with me tonight. As mentioned, I've had a long career in the industry, and Judy's been with me every step of the way. She's a retired social worker, so not only can she tell you everything that's wrong with me, but she can give you a diagnostic code to back that up. <laughs> but. Uh, 
Anyway, she's my, uh, you've heard a stay-at-home mom. She's, now that she's retired, she's a uh, never-home grandma, and she just got back from California, helping my son with his two little girls. And we're off to D.C. very shortly, as my daughter is expecting the second half of yesterday, so it's uh, exciting. I'd like to thank all the former Cushing Gavin Award winners that have nominated and supported me for this award. What makes this award so special for me is, is all the years that I've spent out where you are looking on as people that I've worked with and admired and learned from have been honored by the Labor Guild. I specifically want to recognize my brothers from uh, Local 103 IBW, Chucky Monahan, Johnny Dumas, Mike Monahan that uh, preceded me. And I also have to pass along the best the well wishes of the original Cushing Gavin Award winner. Uh, John Barry. He called me, uh, you know, I've been around a long time, but I definitely was not here in 1967 when Don won it. So it's befitting here on the 50th anniversary. But Don called me, and uh, it was a great honor. I had a great fortune of working with him later in his career, and uh, I know he's disappointed he can't be here tonight. And of course, there's many other the Cushing Gavin Award winners over the years that I've really meant a lot to me. I saw Tommy Gunning here earlier today, and and, uh, and then there was the original Tom Gunning, and uh, guys like Eddie Egan, and Joe Dart, and Kevin Cotter, and of course, Father Boyle. And uh, there's two guys that, special uh, builders that I wanted to recognize that are no longer with us and really meant a lot to me. And, and first of all, that's uh, Joe Nigro. And Joe Nigro, uh, I first knew him when I first started my career. And he was an assistant BA with Local 103. And I was as green as grass, and he uh, and he never lost patience with me, and he never held my inexperience against me, and I always appreciated that. And then, of course, there was uh, my friend, Paul McDevitt. And the fact that practically everybody Paul ever met to call him his friend really tells you everything you know about need to know about Paul. And finally, I'd like to thank the people most responsible for whatever success I've had in my career, and that's my contractors, the members of the Boston chapter of the National Electrical Contractors Association. There's an old Yiddish saying that goes, it's about raising children, it says, what, takes a, what does it take to make a, a, a good parent? And that's a good child. To stretch that analogy, you can't be a good management representative unless you have good contractors and managers to represent. And I've been blessed in that regard. And when we push for responsible contractors, ordinances across the state. It's these contractors that are models for that. Contractors that provide a safe workplace, pay a living wage, and provide educational opportunities, quality health care, and a secure retirement for their employees. Back when I was starting out, the old timers, I guess I'm one now, they used to say in negotiations, all we want is an honest day's wage for an honest day's work. 
You don't hear that anymore. Sure, it was used and misused, overused, turned into a cliche. But I believe it's a phrase that still has some meaning, or at least it should have some meaning. There was a mutual understanding of what an honest day's work was all about. Both management and labor understood what that meant, and there was little tolerance for those that didn't do the right thing. The trade-off, of course, is we all knew what a fair day's wage was. Now, that doesn't mean that I haven't argued over a nickel. I know the guys from 103 can uh, attest to that. But it does mean that we know what being a responsible employer is all about. Sadly, this understanding seems increasingly foreign in our country today. But if I've accomplished anything in my career, I'd like to think that I've done my part to maintain and build upon that understanding and that mutual respect between management and labor, at least in my little part of the world. Thank you for this honor. I'm humble. I appreciate it. Thank you.